I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Nick. And I'm Mary. And our project is addressing Namibia's food insecurity with the use of aquaponics systems. Today, one in five Namibians are left without access to enough food due to a lack of rain. This shows the severe consequences that climate change is currently having in Namibia, and we hope to address this with the use of aquaponics systems. First, we want to highlight the economics of Namibia and show its reliance on agriculture. <laughs> Looking specifically at its time of apartheid rule, Namibia was under South African power, and this led to large amounts of discrimination and inequality within its economic system. When it declared its independence in 1990, there were large amounts of inequality, as I already stated, along with um, the country was already at a fiscal crisis. Within its inequality, we can see this within the Gini coefficient and the country's GDP. The Gini coefficient shows the wealth distribution within the country, and it's currently the largest within Africa. Within unemployment rates, this is a large issue in Namibia, currently 51.2% of Namibians are unemployed. And specifically pertaining to our project, the agricultural market, the employment rates have decreased by 49%, and within the fishing markets, they have decreased by 89%. This leads us to our understanding of the market of Namibia today when it comes to economics. It is comprised of two major sectors, both the modern market and the agricultural market. The modern market is its system of imports and exports, and this comprises 90% of the country's GDP. And then we have the agricultural market. While this only comprises 5% of the country's GDP, it actually employs over 70% of the population, and this is why we see it as so important and we want to address it today. So within Namibia, there's two different types of agricultures that's usually practiced, and this is commercial or um, communal farming and so in the south where the climate is more dry is where the big commercial farms are and they usually practice ranch um, ranching and then in the north where the climate is a little more rainy they practice communal farming or subsistence farming and this means that families will grow their own food for self-consumption and also to provide for other family members because of the large reliance on subsistence farming and also the poor climate in the country Namibia does not have a very diverse diet. They typically don't eat any fruits and vegetables, which can lead to poor nutrition. So their diet is typically comprised of starches, such as maize, meats, such as cattle, and various types of fish. As Namibia continues to develop, individuals are looking to move towards the cities. However, there's not enough land to farm their own food. And as Mary mentioned, with a high unemployment rate, they often cannot afford to buy food from the markets. Um, to address this, they are looking towards relatives in rural areas to supply them with food transfers or portions of their crops. So this is a quote from an individual living in Manhattan. It says, one cannot completely rely on the food from the north because, in the, because those in the north also depend on it for survival. And these days, the rains and floods have affected the harvest. So as it was mentioned, the climate is greatly impacting the amount of crops available, which is impacting food insecurity within the country. Now to understand our project, you'll have to understand the system of aquaponics, which is the combination of traditional aquaculture through cultivation of fish in a man-made tank and the cultivation of crops in a grow bed. Now the only input into an aquaponic system is feeding the fish. Now you feed these fish and they produce wastewater. This wastewater is then pumped up into the grow bed where microbes will break it down and convert it into nitrates and other useful nutrients the plants can absorb. The plants will absorb these nutrients and filter any large particulates out of the water, or it is circulated back into the system to be used again. We will be traveling to Vinhook, Namibia to work with the Hans Seidel Foundation. They were founded in 1967, and their mission is to address democracy, peace, and development. They are currently working in projects in over 70 countries worldwide. We will be working with them in Namibia to address some of the issues we just mentioned, such as climate change, the lack of water, and food insecurity. While working with the Hans Eidel Foundation, we will address food insecurity in Namibia with the use of aquaponics. We're going to do this through our three objectives. The first objective being creating educational materials that we will use to educate the community and public on the benefits of aquaponics. Our second objective is to create a pro-type aquaponics system within a local school and then teach the students and teachers how to actually use it. And our third objective is to create a manual for our prototype that we designed so that other community members can then go and create their own aquaponics systems. We're now going to walk you through the methodology of how we'll approach these objectives. So for the basis of our project, we decided to make an iterative design process in order to obtain all of these objectives. In the first stage, we're going to establish the need of that specific objective and collect the pertinent information. We'll then go into the second stage, which is brainstorming ideas 
of how to meet this design process. So this could be anything from how we're going to construct the infographics to how we're actually going to make the prototype design. In stage three, we'll then establish the solution. So this could be how we're going to construct the manual, how we're going to construct the infographics, or what the actual design is going to be. And then we'll produce that design. We'll then reach the feedback period, which is the most critical, I would say, of all of the periods, because we will give this out to the community and receive feedback on whether it is meeting the objective that we're trying to meet. We'll then go into a revision period where we'll try to meet our final design, and we'll come to that final design when we reach data saturation. So this is a point where we reach no more feedback. And this design process is very important, we believe, because the stages can be interchanged and we can repeat the feedback loop several times in order to reach that data saturation to meet our objective. In order to best implement the iterative design, we are taking an agile approach. This will allow us to continually continuously develop and work through the iterative design multiple times. As you can see in this overview, there is overlap between each of our deliverables and our working schedule. So this is in order to continue our research and collecting data to implement within each deliverable. And these will be broken down when we further discuss each deliverable. When we arrive in Namibia, we'll be conducting interviews at the elementary school with students and teachers. The main purpose of these interviews is to gauge the educational and reading levels of the students by looking at assignments they've been given. We'll also ask general questions about their experience with agriculture to, and to gauge their understanding of climate change. We will lastly ask a few questions about their general knowledge of aquaponics specifically. For our first objective, where we will be creating educational materials, we're going to specifically make infographics, fact sheets, videos, and workshops. And these will be used on the Hansendale Foundation's website, Think Namibia, and they'll also share it with the students and teachers at the school we'll be at and with other members of the community. You can see our timeline here for how we're going to do this. So we'll be following the iterative design process, which means we'll first conduct our research within week one and decide maybe what information we want to include on the infographics and also how we want to design them. Weeks two, three, and four, we will actually be designing these educational materials. And then that will lead into weeks five and six, where we plan to do a review and redesign process, where we will present the educational materials to our sponsors, the students, and the teachers at the school and ask for their feedback. And we're going to be looking for feedback specifically on how they think they look, how informative they think they were, and their ability to understand them. We'll then make the um, changes to design that we need to, and then come up with our finalized design within week seven. Our second objective is to design and build a working aquaponics system prototype that we will implement in a rural school in Namibia. In the first week, we intend to do all of our basic research on viable materials and crops that we can use in the system, as well as going and analyzing a currently designed system created by an aquaponics expert we will be working with in the country named Julius Burton. In the second week, we intend to go through our entire revision process using that design as a template and finalize the design by the end of the week. On the third week, we want to collect all the materials we will use to build the system in the school. In weeks four and five, the system will be built in the school alongside the aquaponics expert, Julius Burton. And in week six and seven, we intend to use it as a proof of concept to teach students about aquaponics and its benefits and uses in the country. Our third and final objective is to create the design manual. So this is a research period of the first three weeks, and this is because we'll need the finalized design, as Nick just mentioned, in order to implement this into the manual. It will also include some of the uh, information, such as Sophie mentioned, with the interviews. We'll then go into the preliminary design period in weeks four and five, so this will be deciding how we want to convey the information so that other groups can go forward and create their own designs of the prototype. We'll then go into a review and redesign period in week six, where we'll give this manual to not only the Hans Seidel Foundation, but also to the teachers in the school, and we'll try to get their feedback on whether they think the average Namibian will actually be able to make this prototype and recreate it in order to help them in their subsistence farming at home potentially. We'll then in week seven finalize what our final manual will look like and give it to the Hans Seidel Foundation so they can distribute it to Namibians. We look forward to going to Namibia and working with the Hans Seidel Foundation and providing them with educational materials, a working prototype, and a construction manual to combat food insecurity in the country. And finally, we'd like to thank the Hans Seidel Foundation, Professor Doran, and Professor Stafford for their help throughout this past term, and we look forward to continue working with them. that the 
so they're able to grow their own food, which is going to decrease the cost. And Hansai Dell is paying for this off the farm system. We also hope to use materials that are very simple that they may be able to find in their own communities. So like. They aren't going to be complex systems that need very expensive pumps or anything like that. It'll be something that they'll be able to find in their community and implement. What is the, um, what's the scale of the prototype model that you're going to build in the school? It's probably only going to be like a 20 to 40 gallon tank, not much bigger. It's very, it's very, in, it's intended to be a proof of concept for aquaponics. Not really like a communal farm that everybody can get their food from. So, is your main objective then to educate the children on the system, or to help with the food insecurity in there? Because it, it to, you know, I, I think you know, educate the children. That's great, and the hope is eventually they'll be able to, you know, grow this bigger. Or is it really to address the food insecurity, in which is this the best way to do that? You know, the hope with the Hansa Foundation was that by going into the specific school, we kind of get the kids excited about it, so then they'll bring it home to their parents and say, hey, we're learning this at school, this is a really cool way for us to grow vegetables that we may not have at home, and then hopefully they'll bring that and make it more of an individual home-based subsistence farming system that they can then use for their individual family, and maybe go to the bigger community if they want, but it won't be a very large-scale process. But what kind of veg schools can you grow with this? Mostly leafy greens like cabbage and lettuce. Um, some complex root systems can get grown. It depends on the system. It seems counterintuitive uh, to introduce aquaponics to a place that's in a drought. But on the other hand, do you have any data on how what the ratio of water per production in this would be compared to just putting it on the ground? This is 90% efficient, as in 98% of the water in the tank gets reused every time, whereas dumping water on the ground, you lose all of it to the ground. Regarding <laughs> 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 your educational materials, and I love the idea that you want to get them excited and take it and taking it home, but that's going to really depend on the delivery. <coughs> We're actually going to be working with the Turn Back Time Farm this week, and they are an organization around Worcester that educates children on agricultural practices, and we wanted to see how they typically get kids engaged in the activities and how they feel. Um, I think also the main goal of this aquaponic system is so that the students can take home the vegetables that they're growing, so that might like, raise some interest from their parents as to where they got these or how they grew them, and if the students are growing them themselves, they might have this feeling of achievement. More questions? So what age group are the children in this school? We don't actually know the school yet. They're going to tell us when we get there. Or um, yeah, we just think so. They said elementary. <laughs> we just don't know what exactly the age group is. Great. Thank you.